everybody, so welcome. Um, this is the second of four concerts for the 2018 Cabin Fever series. We do four concerts, wonderful, high quality acoustic music. We have a January, February, March, and April concert. So feel free to take one of these flyers that you see all about. You can see what the next ones are, and Rick will tell you more about those. Um, I want to tell you about Mark Benton, the artist. Um, this is a series of eight oil paintings, and he's looking at older industry in the rural landscape, and it's a study and a question. You know, is, is this beautiful, is this not beautiful? You know, what are we doing with our old infrastructure in our rural landscape? So it's, um, I'll try to remember the lights up at the halftime so you can see it better. I want to thank Five Town Friends of the Arts for their support of this series. They helped with the publicity and they helped tune the piano when we need the piano tuned. And they're a very supportive organization. Um, they also brought all that wonderful food downstairs at the food table, so if you want to partake of food, you can donate to them, you can join, there's little envelopes for you to join. But they help out with scholarships, instrumental rentals, the Fine Arts Festival, Bristol Best Night, community grants, musical events underwritten, the high school play, library programs, Howden Hall Restoration, Bristol, Bristol Historical Society, and Art on Main. And Art on Main has some incredible programs <coughs> also going on, and I think Ellen Spring is in the room and might be able to tell people about what some of those programs are, because I, I, I didn't get any more of those flyers, but there's some really great Yeah, I mean, we have a watercolor, a drawing class, a watercolor class, um, collage, the bookmaking, thank you. Yeah. Wow. One other. Oh, yeah. It's really amazing. Um, so, anyways, that little organization, Five Town Friends of the Arts, does a lot, and so we're grateful to them. Um, and um, I'll let Rick introduce the other things, but I want to introduce Rick because he is so amazing. He's so helpful to this series. He's a musician himself, but he's the most generous um, supporter, helpful person of other musicians, and, and um, facilitates so much to make this an enjoyable series to, to put on. And, it's just a, it's just great to have a buddy, <laughs> and, and he's the best. And then he also feeds the musicians wonderful gourmet meals so that they play their very best. And um, he just has many, many talents, and I'm just so grateful to him. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. showing up every week, every time we do this, and that's what makes it go. I mean, we could do everything that we do, and if you didn't show up, it wouldn't work. So you <laughs> folks deserve a lot of credit for supporting this series, so thank you very much for showing up and supporting local <laughs> Well, Karen, uh, I'm going to have to amend my list here because she already did some of the things that I was going to say. This is the second in the series. I'll uh, just tell you a little bit. March 24th, Daymark will be here. They're a Celtic group. Um, I think they're kind of spread out, mostly in Maine. They have one member who lives up in Montreal. But wonderful uh, music, flute, uh, pipes, fiddle, uh, vocals. Uh, definitely worth seeing in the month of St. Patrick's Day. So that will be next month. And then April 28th, Jan Falke and Brittany Haas uh, will be here. And that's one you don't want to miss. Uh, Jan was here a few springs ago uh, with uh, Keith Murphy and another partner. And that was quite a series. And, uh, and he and his wife, uh, <coughs> Natalie, excuse me, got married up at the Common Ground Center. So they have... When I said, well, why don't you come back to the area, they were pretty excited about doing that. Um, so they'll be here in <coughs> April to round out the series. Um, one thing I wanted to mention about the Five Times Friends of the Arts, and it is true that they do some amazing things, uh, March 18th, they're going to be honoring Marianne Lust and Deborah Lubar for their contribu contributions to the art scene here in our Five Town area, and there too. I mean, uh, Marianne has been doing night fires off and on for how many years now? It's become an institution. Yet. So, uh, so that's going to be uh, 1 p.m. over at Holly Hall. And if you haven't been to Holly Hall yet, uh, 
part of the sound <laughs> fixing has happened, and it's amazing the difference. Uh, the echo is kind of gone, and so uh, you know it's a big deal, and it's going to be finished within the week, and uh, so we're going to have a hall that uh, the sound is worthy of the beauty of the hall. So that's uh, look for any. So don't avoid Holly Hall from now on <laughs> because of the sound. Where is that? Holly Hall. Uh, right down here, our, it's our town hall. Well, yeah, but it's had notoriously bad mm -hmm. sound for everyone. <coughs> okay, so Five Town Friends, that's it. Okay, so uh, I should talk about Mark Benton. Um, so, yeah, so you know, uh, when I first moved up here 28 years ago or so, Louis Collins was all over the place. I remember seeing her up at the uh, the Rifton Coffee House, and, uh, and then didn't hear anything about her until uh, Donna Hebert sent me an email this fall and said, hey, I've got this new group of Max Cohen and Louis Collins. Well, that picked my interest. And then she sent me some sound files, and I said, oh, yeah, let's do this. Um, well, unfortunately, as you may know, Donna had a medical emergency, a dental emergency, which is even worse than a medical emergency. <laughs> And she couldn't be here, so uh, our best goes out to Donna and hopes she gets better soon and feels better soon. Um, but we can thank Donna because because of her reaching out to me, Louie and Max are here tonight. So uh, that's a very special thing. And so we're, thank you for coming. Uh, I'm going to get out of the way now and let them take over. Uh, so please welcome. Uh, Louis Collins, Max Cohen, two Ravens. <laughs> GPS and the phone and going, Camp Brook Road, can this be the right way? <laughs> and we got up, I went, oh yeah, it's a Vermont road. I grew up up here. I know these roads. A few frost heaves. This is good. Nice view coming over. Just got to be careful when you're drinking tea. So yeah, it's been a nice, nice day. We're actually going to start with a song that Donna wrote. This is one of hers that I have been singing for years and years. Even before we did it as Three Ravens and now as Two. <laughs> We love the publicity, by the way. <laughs> you read it. It's just see us as two. And uh, anyway, we had, we had ideas about that. <laughs> we had ideas about that. Maybe we can talk about that later. Yes, we'll do that. We're an E. We're an A. We're an A. Good. Yes. And I indicate we're in the right place. Oh, good. That's always convenient. It helps. I forgot the two. We'll, we'll notice if it's not. We'll know.
now all the world the sons of Cain make war again. Some will fall, some bear the shame, and some just can't go home. So this is called The Ballad of the White Seal Maid. This seal is, um, um, I just recently found out that the word selkie does not mean what I thought it meant, which was a seal that could come on land and shed its skin and skin and take human form, but that a selkie is just a, a, a Gaelic word for a seal. So she's a selkie, but yeah, so yeah, I need an E flat. I have one of those. It's, uh, it's free. It's free? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
comes to the shore and she sheds her seal skin. She dances on the sand, dances under the moon. Her hair falls in waves down upon her white skin, and only the seals hear the tune. La da 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 Fisherman takes her seal skin, staking his claim to a wife from the sea. He raises his hand, holding up the white skin, says, Now you must come home with me. Oh, weeping she goes, and still weeping she stays. Her hands are her craft, her babes are art. A year and a year and a year more she stays, a rock, a cold rock in her heart. But what is this hid in the fisherman's bag? It smells of the ocean, it feels like the sea. A bonny white seal skin glows up in the bag, and never a tear more cries she. Goodbye to the house and goodbye to the shore. Goodbye to the babes that I never could claim. But never a thought to the man left on shore, for self is my nature and name. She puts on the skin and dives back in the sea. The fisherman's cry falls on water deaf ears. She swims in her seal skin away out to sea. And the fisherman drowns in his tears. <laughs> Thank you. 
I never know how to introduce this song. I haven't played it that much in my life yet. But this is going to be, uh, we're, we're creating a record right now. It's almost done. It's almost this close. It's going to feature uh, Louis I and, and Donna and uh, doing a lot of Jane Yolen's material uh, to set to music. And it also has Jane on it reading. It's going to be called The Infinite Dark. And a lot of it's uh, sort of based in uh, old Celtic Selkie type writings that Jane worked on, as well as some stuff that's sort of different takes on various fairy tales. Um, and she did some stuff with Hansel and Gretel. And I, totally independently <coughs> of Jane, I never had met Jane, I didn't know I was going to do this, I wrote a song about Hansel and Gretel several years ago. Oh, this is an old one. Yeah, this turns out, this had nothing to do with the record that we're making. You didn't know I knew that you'd written it separately, but I didn't realize it was that long ago. And, um, <clears throat> I had no idea this would happen. So this is my, this is my song about Hansel and Gretel. <coughs> which, you know, everybody should have one. <laughs> and, um... I'll share yours, how's that? <laughs> I, I don't, yeah, exactly, please. <laughs> you should write one, Louie. I, I, like I don't know how many people have heard it. I, I was, I, I grew up listening to this silly record, this Disney record with Hansel and Gretel when I was a kid, and um, yeah, it's really dark. I mean, this is, uh, anyway. Uh, so I, this is a, this is from the perspective of Hansel, and it's years later. <laughs> this is revisionist history. I'm not going to tell you the story of Hansel and Gretel here. This is after everything went down years later, and the, the, uh, the emotional trauma and the scars that were <laughs> All right, uh, it's called Things That Should Never Be Known. Calling the faithful 
to kneel down in reverence, to quietly to comforting spells.
things. The ukulele would be fast to tune. Mm -hmm. Banjo, not so much. Mm -hmm. Unless I go the wrong branch or too far. Yeah. There's the classic joke, which is folk singers spend half their time tuning and the other half playing the tune. You must have heard that. Is it just only me? I, I'll spare you tell <laughs>
But if there 
And it takes forever to figure out when you got six strings, which one is out. Then it doesn't take long at all to tune the other five to it. <laughs> <laughs> Truth is stranger than fiction. <laughs> <coughs>
capo position. Oh. That was bound to happen. Good right? hang here. It, it was bound to happen. <laughs> States, who's a classical musician from India, and he, he saw a performance um, of a symphony orchestra, and later on was asked what was his favorite part, <laughs> and he said the very beginning, and they said, oh, is that the, the first movement? And he said, no, no, before that. <laughs> so he, what he was grooving on was when all the pit orchestra people were tuning their instruments. <laughs> There's something about that. I, I um, played in, in orchestras and bands growing up around here. I played in, in, at Spalding High School in Barry, and then I played with the Vermont Youth, Youth Orchestra, both on violin and later on French horn. And um, I didn't, you know, then years all I did was folk music. And uh, six years ago, I started playing clarinet, and I started playing in my local community band. And I realized one one evening I was going in for rehearsal and I was getting there a little later than I usually did. So as I walked down the hall, I heard everybody tuning and warming up and everything, and I just my body just got happy. <laughs> and I went, this is what I did. I really love playing with other people, and so much of what I've done has been solo. And that, yeah, that's, this is playing playing with with. Donna and Max. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just so thrilled because of that. It's just, you know, more, I don't have to do everything for all this stuff. This stuff to be going on. It's done. But yes. I'll not pine for 
often boast to the riverside where the rushing waters roar, hoping for another glimpse of that maiden on the shore. Oh. 
that tune. It's one of those tunes that you learn as a kid, and it's like your very first fiddle tune ever, because it's not hard to play, and they teach it, and uh, and you kind of it gets lumped into that. Oh, it's let's t it for me. It's like as a as a musician, it's like one of those things you learn as a kid, and you don't really take it seriously. And you're kind of whipping along, and you play it fast, and people in the sessions play it fast, and they're whipping along trying to prove something, and slowing it down, you get this emotional content out of it that you just totally missed when you were eight years old. <laughs> and uh, that's why I think it's, just, it's such a cool, I love that, anyway. So uh, anyway, there's the super slow, gritty version of Cluck Old Man. And I, So you got this well, right? My favorite verse is the one about the hand, uh, the, the fox and the hen, yeah. because I had chickens for years, and um, and I had a bunch of different breeds, and most, mostly really unusual ones, but I did have some Rhode Island Reds, and at one point, I had two young hens. I had I, I had kind of a home for geriatrics. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't bear to, uh, to put them in the soup pot, and uh, you know, they were my, my little bitty friends, and um, so I, I had a lot of hens who didn't lay much, but I would refresh the, you know, I freshen the flock with some new ones, and, and I had I had one in particular, an old white cochin, who was a, a lovely setter. She was she was a, a ruby hen, and so she hatched out a bunch of them. So at one point I had these two really fine young red red brown reds, and and one day I heard a commotion out in the yard, and they were free range, they were all over, and uh, they, they did have a pen. But, I heard all this noise up at the end of the top end of the pen, and I look out my door, and there's a coyote grabbed one of my young Rhode Island reds. Why couldn't he get one of the old ones? He wanted tender flesh. So I went out, and I'm yelling and screaming and banging the door, making all sorts of noise. And where does he go? I'm standing here in the doorway. The top of the pen is over here. He takes that beautiful hen, and he runs. Right in front of me. And then he turns and he hightails it across the pasture. But I have to say, it was gorgeous. It was this gorgeous coyote with this beautiful, dark, deep red head in his mouth. And what a picture they made. Streaking. He moved so fast. You couldn't believe how fast this guy was going. Right in front of me. And then, and I went, okay. <laughs> but I was not. I was, not. <laughs> I was pretty good. <laughs> so yeah, my, I don't know. <coughs> no, yeah. mm -hmm. All right. So what are we doing here? Oh, we're doing Susquehanna. This is a tune I wrote for the river. Sitting right next to the river on uh, in uh, the Southern Tier Expressway. I think it's Route 17 across uh, southwestern New York State. Um, the, it parallels the Susquehanna River for a few miles in there. And, and there's one spot where you can pull off into a rest area. And it's just this boring looking rest area and with some picnic tables and a chain link fence separating the rest area from the river. But it was spring and the river was really high and gorgeous. And I've been watching it all the way, you know, driving down um, Route 17. So I decided I needed a break and I got out and sat on top of one of the picnic tables so I could see over the chain link fence, fence and pulled out my banjo. And just before I'd leave, been leaving the house, I le left the house, I had had it in this, this um, double C tuning, and I slapped a capo on it on the third fret, just to, you know, before I put it in the case. And so when I got it out there in the rest area, I went, I went, oh, wow, that's an interesting tuning. Hmm. Was it in tune? Yeah. <laughs> oh, another miracle. Yes. <laughs> Close enough. Close enough. And so I sat there and I wrote this tune for the Susquehanna River. So of course it's called Susquehanna. Yeah?
was going to do anything old, if we were going to do any of my old songs. And I said, yes. And she was all excited about that. And I said, I have to wait for it. And so we wait at the end of the concert. And um, this, this one, one of the things that my, my adventure over the past two years has been switching from guitar to the, my, my little tummy ukulele here and um, having a blast with it. it. It started out as something because I was starting to have trouble. I have, you, you can probably see all this weird stuff, all this bling on my hands. Mostly guitar players don't wear bling, right? These are just splints because I'm having um, issues with arthritis. And, um, and so it, it initially was a stopgap measure. It's, oh, you play a little bit easier on my hands. And then I started playing it. Mm -hmm. And discovering that there's four strings here. That's like Bill Loft told me for years. Remember Bill Loft with his tenor guitar? He said, four strings are all you need. Yeah, well, and now I agree with him. <laughs> now I have to say, yep, he's right. Although, I have to say, I like having the bottom end there with, the, with Max's guitar. Very nice. But it was just been this, this adventure of learning a whole bunch of, of um, American standards and, and putting some Brazilian bossa nova on this, mm -hmm. and then taking some of my older songs and rearranging them on, on here. And, and that's been really fun, especially some of these, the, um, the over-tuning ones, like, like um, the Dark Sophie and, and Mystery Pie. But this is one. This is one from my second album that's now out of print, from the Baptist and Fire album, that um, I got so sick of doing. I said to sing it in every single concert for so many years, and we just had to do it. And uh, at one point I just said, Oh, I think I forgot it. <laughs> but now I'm having fun because I get to play it on my ukulele. <laughs> so, um, thank you all for being absolutely lovely, lovely audience tonight. It's been really, really fun to share this evening with you. And, and boy, Max and I are really relieved. We, we, um, we had so much fun this week. We were kind of going, oh no, how are we going to do this? We don't have to material again. We've got to put together like a whole set's worth of songs in three days. And, uh, and then we just had a blast. <laughs> All of our rehearsals were just so much fun. It was like, oh, okay, this is good. This is great. And Max kept coming up with ideas. Like, we can do Shady Girl. We're like, really? Yeah, I love that song. We can do Pluck Old Hen. Yeah. So it's been, it's been a fun week. And so I'm really, really happy that you were all here so we had someone to play with, yes. to play for, <laughs> to share all the work that we did this week, to share it with you. Thank you so much for being here. And, and I want to thank Rick for inviting us to play here and uh, feeding us this amazing dinner beforehand, and Karen for just being the most wonderful hostess for us. So we've got here taking care of us and opening up her beautiful gallery to us. And, and um, well, thanks for our sound man. <laughs> was there any way that's what I was supposed to be? <laughs> well, this, this is the last song before the encore. <laughs> <laughs> I like to say that it, 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 we can't escape here. There's nowhere to hide. <laughs> no offstage. So we can't go backstage. <laughs> so if you really don't want to hear any more, then, um, then just, just get, get up, up and get up and leave. <laughs> Ready? I'm ready. Do you have anything else to say? I kind of did a whole lot of talking. I there. can't think of it. You, you covered it all. Okay. okay. But, you know, you just wanted to share some little tidbit from your heart. I'll think of it later. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, though. No, it's okay. been a real pleasure, and thank you so much for uh, for coming out to see us. And, and you know, it's good to know that folk music is uh, you know still alive mm -hmm. and thriving. And uh, so keep on coming mm -hmm. and supporting your venue because it's a good place, mm -hmm. a beautiful room. And, Pleasure. So thank you. All right. Too many times I've fallen for a bold flirtatious smile. My emotions had a way of breaking loose and running wild. Till recently I reined them in behind a casual front. I'm older now and wiser, not so quick. Fall in love. I wrote this when I was 29. <laughs> then why did we wake in this morning with the song inside my head? And why the smile of my eyes, the lift in every step? And why when the winter months, summer of flowers of whitest page of you, were all the colors brightened by the memory of you? Joy may lay to take 
last show, uh, last, last song of the evening, Cotton Songs, um, which is a very good listen. Anyway, let's forget about this. Uh, this is a, a version of a, sort of my version. There's a million versions of this song. It's called The Parting Glass. And I will preface this by saying that um, the uh, there's been a few amendments to the lyrics, just things that I did aesthetically uh, that I liked. So that's <coughs> want to happen in, in a lot of this uh, folk music kind of thing. But the last verse you will not recognize unless you've heard us before, because uh, I did write the last verse, so you've been warned. So if you're singing along, you know all the words you're singing yeah. along, and you realize that Max is singing the wrong words, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Hopefully it catches on and it'll become the news, a new verse. That, like, I'd love to be able, I, we, I've done a lot of, uh, in my life I've done a lot, I've, 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 uh, I play with a hammer dulcimer player and he lives on uh, on Martha's Vineyard and uh, we get together a lot and do a lot of shows. We do about three renaissance fairs a year um, and the parting glass is very commonly done at renaissance fairs, it's how I got into doing the song. <coughs> Renaissance Paris, and then I wrote the final, uh, wrote a new verse for this because I, I, there was a final verse that I, it was <coughs> one of those final verses that I didn't adore, so I was like, I want something I adore. So I wrote a new final verse. Anyway, uh, there it is. So this is the uh, final, uh, the final, not the, this is the parting glass. <coughs> And though I try to hold so 